Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark for a catch up on my very quiet few weeks on board recently and my absence from the internet in general. So before we get into proper boat life stuff, I just want to take a moment now to say an absolutely massive thank you to everybody tuning in as this channel has now passed another two ridiculous statistics. So firstly, we've got 22,000 subscribers on the channel now, which is unbelievable for many reasons, but as well, something that just seems beyond the joke now, my friends, this channel has passed 8 million video views, which is, again, an extraordinary number when you think about it. So I just want to say a massive thank you, and again, just reiterate, I don't think that I do anything special, I don't do anything that was deserving of this level of attention, I just point the camera around at beautiful places and share random moments of day-to-day -day life on a boat with you all, and I'm very grateful and just well, just incredibly humbled that so many of you have joined in and stepped aboard for these little videos and, well, been here for the ride with me. So thank you, my friends. It's just it's just unbelievable. I mean, as I've said in the past, when I look back at all of the years where I would struggle to get a few thousand views in a year, yet alone that many in a day, day after day after day, and be measuring video views to the nearest half a million. Just ridiculous. Thank you, my friends. Right then, getting on to boat life and then what on earth I've been up to in all this weird silent period. So basically, as many of you may have seen in recent videos, I went up to the poacher's pocket. This is the top end of the Langoffling Canal that we're talking about. And that's where I used to spend Christmas Day and my winter mooring period when I lived on board Narrowboat Tilly. So for Christmas, I woke up there at the poachers just like good old times and it was all very nice. Then over the start of New Year, I moved up to Cheek Bank for a couple of nights, then moved up over Cheek Aqueduct through the tunnel, ended up mooring up by Cheek Marina for a couple of weeks, which is a nice calm bit of canal because even though the tunnel and the aqueduct are only a mile or so downstream, it's people don't tend to walk in that direction too much because the pubs are in the opposite direction from the aqueduct. But Whereas you might get quite a few people having a turtle down or a bike ride along the towpath around the poacher's pocket sort of area. Up at Chirk Marina area, it's not quite so convenient. There's not so much draw there. So it's a nice, quiet place. And obviously it was quiet in terms of boat traffic because it's the middle of winter. And then on top of that as well, there's been work going on. So the tunnel was closed by Chirk Marina. It's the smaller tunnel, not the famous Chirk Tunnel. And also there's work, I think, even at this moment, still ongoing up at Ponkasuffly Aqueduct. So there's even fewer boats around than I would expect for this very quiet time of year. So it's a beautiful place to just moor up and really enjoy some proper peace and quiet. I'm just going to have a fiddle around with the fire as it's extremely warm on the side of my leg here. So as some of you may know, I stand right next to the fire here to do these uh, videos. Right, I'll be back in a second. So that's it then really for this video. Boat life was nice and calm for a couple of weeks and now I've been back on the move, boating around and it's all good. Uh, hang on a minute. Now, I've been noticeably absent, or noticeably to some of you, uh, from the internet in recent times. Probably a lot of you are thinking, didn't even know you'd gone, mate. Nobody cares. Uh, so, for any new subscribers, I just want to say this isn't normally how these Boat Life videos would go, but just want to say a few things at this point, just, just because I think sometimes it's good to just, well, I don't know, share things with you. So... As you may have noticed, I've gone from doing three videos a week for the last few months to almost nothing. And even the videos I've posted in recent times, apart from the audiobook episode, were old videos that I had recorded from ages ago. So basically, after doing months of three videos a week, I just totally and utterly ran out of steam as... Firstly, you've got to think the sheer amount of work involved in doing three videos a week where you're obviously recording about a million takes to camera and uh, voiceovers before you get one that you like. Then you're running around trying to get new footage to go with the videos. Then also for the things like Boat Life Basics videos, literally going through thousands of clips of Narrowboat Tilly to get footage for that. And then obviously putting it all together and editing and all that sort of stuff. 
just that constant sort of, oh, got to get the next video. Sunday, Monday, uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, Tuesday, whichever way around the days in the week go these days. Um, basically, after a couple of months of that, I was doing a video and I did about 15 takes to camera before I got a final version that I actually liked. And I sat down on the sofa just to my side to start editing it and adding in the boat life footage and stuff. And I just thought, you know what, I still don't like this video. And it just hit me like a brick wall, I've got to be honest. It, it just literally, I was just like, I just can't do this. I just can't do this. And that's where I literally just have had these couple of weeks off where I've done almost nothing productive in terms of uh, progressing the YouTube channel or even making videos of any description really. Even this video has taken me multiple takes on multiple days and who knows how, how long this take will go. I've sat, uh, stood right in front of a very warm fire which isn't helping I'll be honest. So basically that like I say, I don't want to be like, oh, woe is me, it's so hard and that. But just the sheer amount of time that it's taken over these last three months, just worrying about videos and editing and all that. On top of the fact that you've got to remember, I do actually have a proper real job in a supermarket that I have to go to, as well as biking in and out of Oz's Street and doing all these bits and bobs that I do, just in life in general. And then... Um, Again, things like working on the book and the audio book, you can imagine how long it takes me to do. And every three seconds recording the audio book, I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I'll re-record re that one word. And then going back and finding something there I've said. I mean, even in the latest audio book episode, on hearing back the uploaded version, there's at least one mistake that's absolutely driving me mad that I left it in there, obviously not realising at the time. So, yeah, I say, it's just that constant sort of just I just needed to break basically and again I think anything like that where you've got to try and think up ideas and put them together and stuff it's it there's a certain point that you've just got to take a step back and be like let's just rest now there's other little things and I don't want this to sound like wow 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 I'm Dan Brown my life's so hard even though it's pretty much perfect and everything I could have ever wanted it to be and I get to do whatever I want most of the time and but 22,000 people decide to subscribe to me too. Oh, it's so hard being me, Dan Brown, from Sort of Interesting. Check out my books. Um, anyway, oh, good grief. Oh, dear me. Right, that's the uh, second take of that little clip that I've heard done there. Right then, serious note. And as much as I know this might sound like I'm like being a big baby and all that stuff, there's like other things that have gone on, like, I mean, first thing, again, dangerous topic. I never normally talk about these sorts of things on camera, but the amateur psychologists out there may be keen to analyse the fact that starting this mad run of three videos a week endlessly for months on end literally happened in the immediate aftermath of me splitting up with a lady I was seeing at the time. And again, I think when you just finally just run out of steam, sit down and have time to think on these barren, empty winter canals, you're like, oh, flipping heck, I've been... Just stop thinking. Um, and equally, another thing that got me down, I know this is just a big old whinge, this video, I'm so sorry. But again, I suppose this is real life. This is this is my real boat life experience that we're looking at here. And hopefully it's, I don't know, it's probably as boring as it gets in terms of boat life videos. Certainly, the, uh, anyway, let's, let's get on. Another thing that basically, I don't know, it didn't make me feel great. It's probably, I'm not... Went into saying like I've been sat around going, oh, it's terrible, oh, it's so hard, or anything like that. But something that did actually make me feel a bit down and a bit sad was, um, I was at one point I rode my bike in and out towards the street to work and for various reasons five days in a row. So from Chirk Marina, that's um, about a fifteen mile round trip bike ride. Um, not the worst terrain, not the longest of commutes, but. Even after those five days, I was getting back to the boat and I don't know if the fact I was doing me writing and editing the videos, I sat hunched over the keyboard typing and obviously hunched on the bike pedalling away and all that. But basically, at the end of only five days, my back was hurting and playing up and I was like, flipping heck. And I don't know, it just got to me really. And some of you may know that when I lived for a brief time on dry land between my boats, two years, a bit more than a brief time that I tried to pass it off as there. But basically, 
I uh, I tried a, a hundred day, fifteen miles a day bike ride challenge. Where you know that's exactly what it sounds like. And I only made it to twenty something days because my back was just hurting too much, and it was just absolutely killing me. And I think part of that was working on my model railway and stuff. So again, being sat at my desk and all that, but. People may know if you've tuned in since the Narrowboat Tilly era that I always used to talk about having little walks in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, just to get some motion and to stretch out my poor back and all the rest of it so that I didn't get these back pains. And it, it just got to me that that thing, after I've lived such an active life for so long and literally five days of barely any bike riding was enough to literally get me noticeably in pain when I'm like moving around and lying down in bed and thinking... Flipping heck, I'm getting old. Another side note here, doesn't make me feel great, but I've got plenty of grey hairs starting to all come through now. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's the end of life as we know it. Um, so again, I think that that didn't... It didn't it, in the situation of being like, I've hit a brick wall with doing the YouTube stuff, it, it didn't... It didn't... I, well, I don't know what I'm even trying to say. You know, it didn't make me feel any better. Um, so yeah, I mean, an another random thing here, just something more recently in the last few days. Um, and again, I don't mean, I'm not trying to say anything negative here about this, this person. I'm, I'm quite grateful and appreciate the thought, but somebody posted, uh, from the production company or something on Facebook about wanting somebody who lived on a narrowboat to be on, to test out some gadgets for the gadget show on channel five, something like that. And so somebody taken the screenshot and put it on Twitter and tagged me and uh, Cruising the Cut in it. And again, I looked at that and as some of you may know, I've had the chance to be on things like uh, Timothy West's uh, Great Canal Journeys and stuff in years gone by. And the radio and TV and that. Uh, they used to get in touch quite often, but I just, well, I never was interested. And again, like I say, 22,000 subscribers and 8 million views is already more than I could have ever imagined. I'm not interested in being out and about, like trying to be a media personality or being this mega popular person. I, and I just, I looked at that thing and I thought that's a perfect example. An opportunity that I could go after and take and what have you. But I genuinely feel that I'm more likely to completely disappear and give up YouTube and go and work a normal job full time and stuff and live on dry land and not have anything to do with the internet really like I have done over the last few years. I'm as likely or more likely to do that than I am to start running around on telly because just like in the Timothy West days it's it's just not me and again amazing opportunities or not and very grateful I am to have had so many of them over the years and I know that there's people who would tear their hair out saying you could be massive you could do this you could do that just doesn't really interest me it's like I don't have any sort of desire to be like walking down the street and having people know who I am or anything like that it's it's a, a fascinating experience at this level where there's people on the canal and stuff that occasionally will bump into me and know who I am and people who come into my place of work and literally take photos of me which is very amusing to some of my colleagues and less so to others I'm sure um but it's just that sort of thing where you look around and you think I don't want that sort of thing I don't want to be recognizable I originally bought an Arabic Tilly in the old days to just disappear and live a quiet calm life afloat something that I've said in videos that did I completely ruin my boat life by doing all the videos and drawing this attention to myself in the first place who knows who knows perhaps I'm doing it right now and perhaps I'm just an absolute idiot who needs to disappear starting now only joking <laughs> plenty more videos to come it's all a bit of fun anyway yeah Sorry, I don't mean to have wallowed in self-pity like I have done for the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, perhaps I can get that runtime down with a bit of editing and to save you all a few minutes of your precious day. But just wanted to say everything's all good. Thank you for the concern from some of you who've messaged me wondering what's up. And, well, the Boat Life videos will be returning in earnest very, very soon. Um, I believe that I've got some beans and cheese on toast to make on a live stream coming up sometime in the next few weeks. So, again, let's see what happens. Anyway, I'm simply going to say... Please do check out the channel, all the videos from Boat Life on Abel's Ark and Narrowboat Tilly in years gone by. 
feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter, blah, blah, blah. Please do consider checking out my short Boat Life books available for the Kindle as an audiobook and as a paperback collection. And if you're really curious or really want to help me out, please consider checking out my Patreon, which is set up to support the free audiobook that I'm creating over the next few months. So thank you for those of you who have supported me there. It really does mean a lot, really helps out, especially because obviously I'm missing out on loads of book sales by releasing it free as an audiobook. And also, by me being quiet on the internet over the last few weeks, book sales have tanked. So please check those out. Anyway, all honesty, my friends, thank you for joining me. Truly humbling, like I say, to have these ridiculous statistics attached to this channel. So, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it boatworthy. And, of course, my friends, farewell.